the activity that help us to improve our planning and initial thinking ability have uh, give all the information in this project by consulting book this call is now being recorded and my topic uh, presentations project by myself and our course name is independent independent rise uh, uh, independent research paper and uh, our instructor name is pastor jay kumar asaya and today's date and my research project acknowledgement is i would like to express my special thank of gratitude to my instructor uh, pastor jay kumar asaya who gave me the golden opportunity to do this wonderful project on the topic study on the rise of uh, depressions among young adults uh, in india mostly in tamil nadu which also helped me in doing a lot of uh, research and uh, i came to know about so many new things i uh, i am really uh, really thankful to them next uh, my research project table of contents which i have made number one definitions of depressions and how many youth in india are depressed tamil nadu talk depressions in disorder uh, talk causes of suicide of tamil nadu peoples what are the main causes of depressions among the youth which age group is mostly depressed uh, image of graphs chart and depressions according to age and what symptoms of depressions we can see in the youth or adults and how to fight depression strategy and treatment this all i uh, included in table of contents now we'll see the definitions of depressions what is the depression first we know that what is the depressions uh, why people are uh, suffering from these depressions depressions means major depressive disorders is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affect how you feel uh, the way you think and how you act fortunately it is also treatable uh, depression uh, causes feeling of sadness and a loss of interest in activities you once enjoyed it can lead to variety of emotional and physical problems and can decrease your ability to functions at work and home and we can see the pictures of depressions how depressions people are looking like that uh, they are in a, uh, uh, they are not interested in their minds they are not doing any work uh, they are looking very sad uh we can see in these pictures next uh, how many uh, youth in india are depressed in new data released by the who means world health organization shows that 9.3% of youth uh, in age between youth uh, 18 to 24 years in india suffered the depressions in the earlier month of the lockdown made for 22 20 which increased to 16.8% by march 2022 why percentage of youth are depressed in india we can see in this uh, uh, phase that uh, result available that uh, 12% uh, 1.2% to 21% is searched by clinic based studies that youth people are depressed and we see in the uh, school based studies three uh, percent to sixty eight percent and uh, in community studies that people are in depressed is uh, zero point one percent to six point nine twenty four or ninety four percent that people may depressed in this uh, circle now i uh, say that uh, the tamil nadu top in this disperse uh, depressive disorders why tamil nadu top in depressive disorder there are two main reasons uh, uh sorry yeah tamil nadu bears the biggest impact of depressive disorders in the country disability caused by the disease which makes people sad fatigue and disinterested in any activity uh, besides uh, giving them sleep apnea and loss of appetite in this high in this state means this there in tamil nadu there is one disease that we call sleep apnea means this is the uh, very uh, dangerous disease uh, we have searched that sleep apnea means uh, uh, people uh, with the lack of oxygen that are uh, not uh, from brain so from lungs to this not going to brain and people are many uh, in the heart attack people are died from this uh, disease so it is very dangerous a large or large of people are died from this disease in tamil nadu uh, this is caused by depressive disorders 
Next talk project of suicide of Tamil Nadu. I'm going to see the pictures of uh, suicide uh, because uh, there's a reasons. We can see that the Tamil Nadu recorded the highest number of suicide by uh, accounting for 12.5 percent of total cases uh, reported in 2012. When it comes to specific issues like uh, love affairs and failure in exams that led to suicide, the state has again top in the south. Means there's the two reasons: uh, love affairs and uh, the failure of the examination is the reason. that people are uh, doing this wrong step in their life and uh, next we see that what are the main causes of depression among the youth the main causes of depression of youth are uh, stressful events uh, childhood experiences life events styles of thinking other mental health problems physical health problems family history uh, medications uh, recreational drugs and alcohol this is the causes of depression among the youth next which group is mostly depressed and we see the chart here also uh, uh, between age 18 to 24 years are and we see the uh, graph chart of depression according to age uh, there is a five color boxes and we see the yellow color boxes shows that moderately severe depressions and dark blue may boxes shows the minimal depressions light blue boxes show the severe depressions and orange color boxes shows the mild depressions and uh, uh, silver color uh, shows the boxes moderate depression and we see the chart here uh, that uh, Uh, the, uh some uh, here is the color uh, boxes is we can see the age also uh, between 11 to 17 and 18 to 24 here we see the uh, uh, light blue color boxes severe depressions and we see this the chart depressions results by age next we see the what symptoms of depressions we can see in youth or an adult Here are some symptoms we can find uh, 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 depressions in youth or an adult. Uh, number one, there is a sadness. Uh, or means there is sadness there with crying and without crying. We can see their face. Next is anxiety. Means there lot of they are worrying. Uh, next lack of energy and temper outburst and violence episodes. Easily irritated. Whatever we say, they will uh, easily irritated. Then sleeping too little. and too much also then we see the how to fight depressions ways to help yourself through depressions uh, number one exercise and take a 15 to 30 minutes uh, with walk every day eat healthy food and drink plenty of water uh, some people with depressions do not feel much like eating and express yourself uh, next uh, do not dwell on problems notice good things this is the uh, uh, strategy to fight the depressions uh, people can people can come out from the depression also and at last we see that uh, 16 uh, strategies and treatment to fight the depressions uh, what is the treatment to fight the depression we can see here that we can talk to someone when we talk to someone uh, we feel uh, some relax in our life next is journalism and so i see a doctor and uh, you have uh, one more minute uh, ribika yes sir yes sir uh, mindfulness body and mind exercise balance diet avoid alcohol supplement this is a treatment as a strategy of the depression next is my last conclusion is here i have came to the end this project on the topic study on the rise of depressions among young adult uh, mostly in tamil nadu uh, and i would like to share my experience while doing the project i learned many new things about this research project it was wonderful learning experience for me while working on this project next is my bibliography by from where i am taking for successfully completing my project file i have taken help from the following websites uh, from google and youtube and google images and book where i have uh, taken uh, feeling great by david d bursons and learn hopefulness next and my people uh, which i have take the help from our instructors jay kumar sir and shreya and our parents and our friends thank you right thank you ribika uh, so ribika one major question is yes, um, what is the biblical perspective in all this <clears throat> yes sir i'm not sure if you've uh, included that in the report but uh, in whatever you presented 
the biblical perspective and the biblical recommendation so i'd like to hear that from you please sir my thought uh, for this depression people is that uh, uh, people uh, why sorry how why means why a uh, people why learn how people are suffering from this uh, disease and uh, taking a uh, wrong steps from their life and they are taking wrong steps like suicide uh, reason is that so they did not have any hope and they are hopeless people uh, they have no no uh, any hope uh, and uh, but i pray for those people who suffering from depressions uh, i want them to personally encounter with uh, jesus and uh, uh, personally experience with uh, jesus because in bible says in matthew 11:28 Uh, come to me, and uh, uh, all you who are uh, worried and burdened, and uh, I will give you rest. Because God is the Jehovah Shalom, which He is a peace giver. God to the uh, this suffering people. Yeah. So my my question is, um, why is that biblical perspective of depression and biblical recommendation for? overcoming depression or you know the solution to that why is yes, that sir. not part of the presentation why is that not part of the paper because you know our research paper has to have a biblical perspective that is why we have included that in our course right independent yes, research paper it has to have a biblical perspective so yes, that may i'm sorry i have not included in that sir yeah so that is a main thing Yes, you know, sir. in our research paper, the biblical perspective should be the main thing, because yes, um, without that, it just becomes another article, another, you know, in uh, another project. But uh, the reason why we have it in this course is that it should very strongly have a biblical perspective in terms of identifying the issue, in terms of what the Bible says about depression. Um, maybe how should it be handled, and is that a lasting solution? You know those kind of things. So I just wanted to mention that those the you know the main main core of it I find is missing. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, yeah. Um, and um, so did you have? Uh, yeah. A lot of things uh, you mentioned the bibliography and also the source of research. Uh, but did you also um, you know? Meet with people, and if so, what was the sample size? Um, did you meet? Do you have questionnaires, or was it data from the internet that you mostly that? Yes, sir. From the internet, is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, Rebecca, thank you. Yes, thank sir. you so much. Thank you okay, so, so then uh, we have Lyndon. Lyndon, if you're ready, we can start. I can see that you're in a nice cafe. I can see that you're in a no, nice no. cafe. It's, it's raining outside. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, so good morning, all. Uh, can uh, you see the screen? Yeah, I can. We can see your screen. Um, it can be a little bigger uh, because I think it's in the presenter view. Yes, um, yeah. So that's uh, taking up space. Uh, what What do you mean? Sorry. No, it's it's you're using the. Presenter view, right? So, yeah, if we can make it a slideshow and then present it, I think it'll be fine. But uh, if you can't, it's fine. You can just go with this. And also, can you uh, increase your mic volume, please? Um, just a little bit so we can um i think your mic volume has to go up okay. just just a moment hmm.
Well, I think it's four. Uh, I'm sorry. I think it's full volume here. Um, it's, it's, it seems a little muffled. So if you, I don't know why, but it's, it's, it's it seems a little muffled. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, speak something again. Uh, yeah, it's. Good morning, thanks a lot. Yes, yes. This is um, this is good. Better? Yeah. Hey, um, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you can start, uh, Lyndon. Okay, well, in this way, the, the, the slides will not move on, fortunately. Well, I, I only tried with the presenter view, so I'm not sure. Okay, go for it. Go for it. No problem. Start. All right, so uh, good morning, all. And uh, so the, the presentation of the, the research that I did is about the denominational divergence. And uh, there, there are a few denominations that uh, I chose in particular, and the differences in, uh, with respect to those denominations and how they view other Christian denominations. Do they respect them? Do they mingle with each other? Uh, is there the, the the doctrines, the theology that they share, uh, do they are are they in sync with the Bible? Are they in sync uh, with other religions? Do they come uh, in unison with other denomination? Is what uh, I looked at as part of my uh, research. So uh, navigating barriers, the great revival. So the differences in the denomination, uh, the Christian theologies, and the, is that a barrier, or does that hinder the the, the, the much anticipated revival in the end days that we live in? So that's the uh, the topic that I I chose uh, for uh, my research. Okay, so uh, the, the the presentation will go in, in this order: introduction, background, theological perspectives, and the denominational differences. Uh, and then finally, barriers to revival strategies for unity. So, uh, firstly, the unity and the proclamation. Uh, we, we look at the, the, the strategies, the uh, hierarchy which uh, every denomination has, the theology which they have. You know, every, every uh, de Christian denomination have a strong theological foundation which they believe in. And they have a strong reason for the formation of that uh, denomination, and and uh, you know uh, they, they go by the tradition, they go by the belief, and they stay true to it. Of course, uh, you know there are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, irrespective of the denomination and theology, it's about the perspective of the people and. Uh, the time where we live in, in the age of internet with uh, you know people that are intellectual people who are open to a lot of uh, information around uh, it depends really on the, the 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 mindset of the people whether to stick to the denomination that they belong to the traditional values that they used to adhere to all these years uh, or they they uh, people are you know these days free to choose uh, to move out of their traditional denomination to other uh, churches or other denomination uh, for, for several reasons. Again, it's, it's based on the, the individual's perspective, these days. But uh, this paper also explores the strategies for the church leadership to foster unity among Christian churches, transcending denominational boundaries, which is crucial for the harmonious proclamation of the good news. Okay, and um, this research uh, focus focus on the denominational differences within Christianity, particularly that may hinder a significant revival or outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So there there are differences, there are theological uh, differences there. But the, the primary focus of this research is what affects the great revival that uh, we are anticipating and looking forward to, and what could push the the, the spreading of the gospel, uh, sharing the good news, the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, all over the world, yeah. So, 
uh, th that's about it. And, and the denominational different divergence uh, just refers to the differences. Uh, the, the literal meaning is difference in beliefs, practices, and doctrines across various uh, denominations, Christian denominations. Okay, and when when we dig into the uh, the, the the denominations, the the, the roots, you know, there are there are this you know Calvinistic and Armenian theology. Um, there are also you know the charismatic views, the associationist views, uh, and why it is formed, who supports it, uh, you know, what are their motives, what was the reason behind it. I've uh, detailed them all in my uh, presentation. Uh, sorry, in, in my research paper, so I'm not going to dig deep into it for now, but it, it's one, uh, you know, the, the Catholic beliefs, the traditions, the values, you know, the hierarchy which they follow, which goes from the Pope to the, uh, you know, the archdiocese uh, and, you know, uh, bishops and uh, the, the parish priests and so on, whereas the, the, the Protestants, which goes by uh, you know the the, the diocese uh, or the bishop, and then the, the presbyters in charge and chairperson and so on. They have their own uh, hierarchy as well, which I have also uh, detailed in, in in my research paper. Uh, so, uh, and why we are why we have this uh, uh, the theology? What's the root cause behind it? Okay, so ev everything starting from. Uh, the, 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 the formation of the Catholic Church and the Reformation, starting with uh, Martin Luther, you know, there there are uh, strong reasons for it, which the, the Catholics believe why they are Catholics, why they want to follow the certain doctrine, and the Lutherans uh, they strongly believe about the Reformation as to why Martin Luther came out of uh, you know the the, the priesthood uh, from a Catholic background and why he had to. You know why you wanted that reformation to happen, and from there on, the reformation, uh, you know, went on from steps to step, and you know, it break down from Lutheran to you know uh, other Protestants, and you know, and thereafter the Pentecostal. So there are enough reasons. If I have to dig deep into it, uh, you know, uh, people could be offended based on their denominational values, but uh, I've, I've detailed them all here and in my uh, in my theory. And I've, I've mentioned them uh, with respect to what each denomination believes, and you know what, what they do not believe, what they do not accept, and the doctrines and the theology which they share amongst denominations, and something that they do not uh, accept or acknowledge. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I apologize for the blurred image, but this is what I could uh, get from online source. Although I thought it's it's more uh, informative enough, but looking into this picture, uh, if I have to, you know, quickly rephrase the Catholics, they are the more rationalist, complex systems of doctrine. They created a framework that many future churches used. In fact, that's one of the contribution of the Roman Catholics or, or Catholics. And Calvinism is the Catholicism of Protestantism, and Lutheran here it's the orthodoxy of protestantism and orthodox is more mystical as few doctrines but defends them more fiercely and more isolationist okay and baptists are the protestantism of protestantism so it's it's like uh, you know th th there is uh, quite a handshake between each of these denominations in terms of the doctrines in terms of the framework which the the, the, the catholic uh, denomination had structured and and it, it goes on it moves on okay and the charismatic and cessationist views that we see amongst uh, the denominations in particularly the charismatic view is what is very popular with within the catholic denominations the, the praise and the adoration uh, compared to what used to be their order of service in the earlier days and the cessationist views discusses on the perspective that you know certain spiritual gifts Ceased after the apostolic age, or it had ceased after the apostolic age, emphasizing that the sufficiency of scripture and traditional worship practices. Okay, and respect to the denominational management and beliefs about revival. Okay, each denomination accepts revival in a certain way. They don't accept revival as uh, uh, all the you know all the same. So, 
in my research, I have uh, discussed on how the Catholics and the Protestants, the Pentecostals, view the revival, emphasizing the renewal movements, spiritual awakening, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, respectively. For instance, the Pentecostals, they believe, uh, you know, in, in mass gatherings, uh, and, you know, people who uh, prepare their hearts, you know, uh, and, and uh, uh, pray and wait for the outpour of the Holy Spirit, whereas, uh, you know, the, the, the Catholics and the Protestants believe in a different way. The Catholics believe, uh, in, in uh, sorry, the, the Protestants believe in more of scriptural doctrines and spreading the word of God as part of revival, and whereas wow. the Catholics... So they, you have about half a minute, uh, Lyndon, sorry. Okay, so... Uh, uh, so finally, the barriers that we have is, uh, you know, the, the, the mix of uh, the Christian denominations that we have and what could be done in order to bring in unison. There are several scriptural verses which supports them, but, uh, you know, the, the primary of it or the core of it is all we are one body in Christ. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ. So if you will understand that and accept God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the tree and God that we worship in, I think we all can come in unity, uh, forgive the, the differences that we have across denominations and accept each and every individual as one created by God and one that are created to be, to worship God and to you know, wait in his presence and receive the revival. That's it. Thank you all. Right. Thank you. So... Um, yeah, a couple of questions. One is, um, you know, um, like we see that, um, like certain denominations, like you pointed out, they are cessationists and um, they don't even believe in the, you know, uh, in the works of the Holy Spirit. In the so, so if, uh, you know, have, have there been instances of um, any denomination which has not been actively seeking or pursuing revival? But there's been a sovereign move of God in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in your study, did you come up with any, any such denomination? And how did that happen? Okay, well, uh, th there have been instances in the past talking about the early 17th century, where mm. it, it was the Methodist Church, uh, uh, you know, formed by John Wesley, which which was actually thereafter. But you know, even before, you know, there was this, uh, uh, you know, outpour of the Holy Spirit, and thereafter we named it as Methodist uh, revival. But even before it, they were just waiting for, uh, you know, the God's outpouring. So uh, I, I don't see the outpour is specific to the denominations, and I, I think everyone in these days supports. Uh, you know the the downpour of the Holy Spirit, and uh, everyone uh, awaits the the revival. But I don't think that's denomination specific, and um, it, it's just that you know uh, they, they they name it differently, they see it differently. But uh, if if any this denomination that have not recognized it, but you know they've experienced the revival, I'm I'm not sure. I I, I did not you know uh, see that in, in in my research. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, so about the uh, the the barriers. So could you just recount if you look at the current church, the present church, the way um, things are? Um, and I'm just particularly, you know, if you look at India. So what do you think um, would be a barrier that is common across denominations? Um, for a revival, for a visitation. Um. In my perspective, the way uh, a, a Christian believer of a certain denomination look at another denomination, a believer of another denomination. See, the, the primary reason why I chose this uh, research topic is because uh, you know, there might be you know, a, a plethora of gods in other religions, but if there's going to be a worship in a certain temple, every uh, people belonging to that region or in and around that region uh, belonging to that particular uh, religion, you now they gather together to worship the God, worship their God or God's goddesses. Whereas when it comes to Christianity, when there's going to be a crusade, when there's going to be a special meeting arranged, 
uh, and and we, we we share tracks. We we communicate about the, uh, the the meetings that's been arranged. The first question we ask is who is coming to share the word of God? Which denomination they, do they belong to? So there's always going to be okay the, the Christians looking at uh, another denomination, and what are they going to preach? Uh, will they going to dilute our uh, doctrine, or will they going to it is hard criticize and so on? So the understanding or the way people look at other denominations, the way people gauge other doctrines and theology needs to be changed. And then uh, you know look at look at individual as individual. Although you know, the doctrines, the theologies are the base that needs to be updated over a period of time. I think you know that that needs to be. Uh, you know, updated as well, so that the wider audience will also acknowledge it. That will remove the barrier, I think. Okay, okay, but also one needs to be um, discerning that whatever one is sharing is based in the Word, led by the Spirit, and uh, right. So one can't compromise on that. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. But that's based on individual. But I'm talking from a denomination standpoint. People who believe that you know it's it's what their pastor, it's what the pope says. That's the final word. So in that case, I think from a structural point of view, there needs to be a change more than the, the individual point of view. I think from an individual point of view, I think the Holy Spirit works within and I know uh, and you know corrects the ways. But from a denomination standpoint, for everyone to come together, the primary concern here is you know you, you might have seen or experienced or heard about it when it comes to an ecumenical service, when it comes to uh, you know uh, bringing together. You know, all the churches in a particular locality, people are insecure, people are offended, people do not want to you know, come together because of the diverse denomination theologies or structures that they follow. So, you know, th I, th I think the root cause is this, okay, the doctrines and the scriptures and the, 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 the hierarchical order which they follow. I think that the, the, the kind of the managements of the denominations, these People will have to understand the scripture more, and they should, you know, uh, come together with whatever. Uh, I mean, by by removing what that, uh, you know, uh, keeps them apart. Right. Okay, and then thank you so much. Thank you for okay. that. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have uh, John Paul. John, please go ahead. Uh, uh, audio is fine. Uh, yeah, fine, fine. Okay. Loud and loud and clear, yes. So I'm just sharing the screen. It's just coming. Once. Yeah. Sure. Is the presentation visible, Pastor? Yeah, it's just coming up. Um, yes, it is. Yes, Pastor, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. You're ready to start? OK, your time starts now. OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, the research topic that I want to present this morning is navigating the minister's kid identity, challenges, and coping strategies in a ministry families from India. Uh, so the kingdom of God consists of families and one of the main constituent is a pastor's family or a minister's family. Uh, but when it comes to the children of the family, it is of utmost important that we take care of them. Um, and often what we see is the children from a minister's family are subjected to heightened expectations, scrutiny, and unique challenges. Their difficulties are often overlooked and neglected. And that is the main reason why we want to address that. So the main objectives of this study was to have uh, an idea about the challenges faced by ministers' children, and also look at the coping strategies. Uh, also to provide some suggestions for the ministers' families and to the church at large from the output that we get. Uh, we've referred to a couple of um, books written by uh, several authors, including Pastor Ashish and Court of Honor. The main methodology used for the study was to have a, a prepared a Google form survey and sent out to uh, a lot of people. Uh, it consists of 40 questions categorized into four subsections. We will talk about this later in the results section. Um, and while sending out this through social media channels, um, the anonymity and confidentiality were ensured. We did not connect 
collect any email address uh, or any sort of information, uh, kept it very anonymous so that they could uh, feel free to give their thoughts. Uh, 49 responses were collected um, and the analysis was done by Microsoft Excel. Uh, so coming to the results and discussions, we had about uh, a similar number of percentages for male and female who answered the survey. 53% uh, of the respondents were uh, less than 28, including uh, Gen C, <coughs> sorry. sorry, Gen C and Gen X. And we also had uh, some respondents uh, from age of uh, about 59 as well. Uh, majorly, 67% of uh, the respondents were brought up in a family who were pastoring a local church full time. But we also had uh, people who uh, were itinerant ministers, worship leaders, youth ministers, um, operation mobilization, different private organizations who serve the Lord in that capacity. Um, so first section of the survey included the family background and ministry impact. Um, interestingly, uh, around 76 percentage of the respondents were very satisfied on being identified as minister's child. Um, and 27 percentage of the respondents faced bullying at a school or college due to their parents' involvement in ministry. Maybe because of that, uh, the next question is also connected to it. Uh, they have uh, thought that my parents could have pursued a different profession. Um, then uh, this is one interesting observation uh, we had it was 59 percentage of the respondents rarely or never had family vacations. Okay. Um, there have been instances, uh, 51 percentage of the respondents mentioned that there have been instances where they wanted to express to my uh, to their parents that church is prioritized more than them. And that created a lot of, uh, that would have created a lot of uh, burden over their heart uh, in relationship with uh, their family. Um, and 67 percentage of the respondents experienced a lot of burden with regard to the expectation from people or congregation. 69 percentage of the respondents had to turn down personal choices because parents were engaged in ministry. And interestingly, 57 percentage of the respondents is a very good number, large number. They desired uh, some quality time. They wanted some quality time with their parents who were involved in ministry. Maybe because of the busy schedules in the uh, ministry, they were not able to spend time with the children. But that was really expected from the children's standpoint. Uh, most of the uh, uh, minister's children ex experienced or received positive affirmation from parents. And both parents were actively involved in nurturing them in godly ways. The second section included uh, involvement in ministry. And again, this was also a surprise. 94% uh, um, of the respondents uh, were very grateful that they were blessed with a lot of opportunities to serve um, uh, in, in the church because being a minister's child or pastor's child. Um, and 86 percentage, this is very surprising. This was very surprising for me personally. 86 percentage uh, of the respondents are currently involved in ministry. But this also points out one limitation of the study, even though we sent out to many people, the response, uh, the 49 responses we have among that 86 percentage are currently in ministry. So all the uh, uh, all the responses that we have is, uh, you know, from that perspective, who are being in ministry, but the hardships or the difficulties, challenges that they went through. Okay. Um, if you look at the fourth graph here, you would see that 60, uh, uh, 35 percentage, 35 percentage of the 49 responses, they experienced a sense of obligation that they did not have any choice to refrain from serving, growing up, being a minister's child. Um, and also, this is another interesting observation. Uh, 41 percentage uh, was saying that we were overwhelmed with burnt out um, to, due to the demands of the ministry. And this is important for us to see because, you know, sometimes being a pastor's child, they are expected to do something. And because of the overwhelming expectation from the people, they begin to do. And it eventually results in certain burnout and being overwhelmed. 
I'm skipping to the next one. Um, uh, they, uh, most of the respondents received uh, guidance uh, from their parents regarding their life calling. But a majority of them, if you watch very uh, closely, uh, uh, near to 20 percentage of the 49 responses, they are still not sure about the life calling. Um, and uh, the remaining of them, uh, you know, found out by themselves. Right. So number three, the third section of the category was the relationships. And 27% um, of the respondents did not see uh, an affectionate gesture between parents. Um, and there was so much in a burden that 86% mentioned that any misstep they would have made would have influenced how others see their parents. And this is another interesting observation, the fourth graph, which you see here. 57% um, of the responses were like they could not, they did not get an opportunity to uh, engage in open conversation regarding sex and sexuality with parents. And uh, most of the other observations were very uh, true to the expectation. So I will skip to uh, one of the uh, interesting observation, 60, uh, 29 percentage, um, only 29 percentage said that they did not see. Remaining 69 percentage uh, of the responses were that they saw, they have been seeing parents arguing in front of them. It would have really impacted their childhood and growing up, right? Um, and uh, they also longed, 65 percentage of the respondents longed for uh, uh, someone outside the family to support them or to uh, share their thoughts as well. Um, I, I will skip a couple of uh, uh, slides just to, uh, you know, I've included everything in the slides, but I'm skipping a few, you know, uh, because of the time constraints. Uh, similar to the sex and sexuality topic we discussed, 67% uh, of the people did not have uh, a freedom to discuss about infatuation or relationships as they were growing up. Now, some recommendations, and uh, this would uh, really help the church at large to promote open communication that uh, pastor's family can have in their family to open up space for people to talk, um, to facilitate career discussion. They can one minute more. Yeah, um, facilitate career discussions that they have the freedom to choose um, according to their desire and the, to have a ministry balance uh, between family and ministry and to have healthy boundaries, not allowing uh, so much of church to creep inside the family uh, and uh, encourage people to explore other venues, uh, other uh, vocations. Uh, and even during relocation, provide stability to have uh, emotional support uh, for them, respect privacy and boundaries children are children and they have privacy and it needs to be protected and to promote emotional well-being strategize their finances keep family time free from church so in conclusion it is evident that there is a need of greater awareness and support for the unique needs of ministers children including the provision of guidance emotional support and opportunities for personal growth and faith in jesus we have to create a culture of understanding uh, for our children and this is very much needed in the days to come i'll conclude with that thank you Thank you, John. Um, okay, so, uh, some questions there you could answer that, but I just wanted to ask. Um, so, in your in your studies, um, in your research, um, um, now, uh, did you come across um, like you did mention that uh, families were? Uh, I mean, it's it's very most of most of it is very encouraging to see that okay um but i just wanted to know like uh, are there kids pastors kids um what was the impression would they want to continue in the steps of their parents or would they definitely want to you know take up an alternative career uh, and not consider ministry as an option yeah that was one of the questions uh, the yeah. question was um, have you considered pursuing ministry or have you considered taking another profession? And that was a main majority. Um, I Currently, I forget the number, but okay. that was a main uh, majority. They, they did not want to uh, you know, follow their father's or mother's way, 
but eventually when we see the other responses we come to know that god eventually put them back in and they are ministering uh, so mm. they were not very encouraged by how the parents were living but eventually mm. they had hard to serve and when we mentioned that question are you currently serving in any area not necessarily frontline um, are you serving in any area like uh, you know serving right. in any capacity they the, the answer mm. is very uh, high and which is really encouraging like they have the taken that step to follow and also one more observation we had was um the foundations uh, the godly foundations were taught by both their parents but when it comes to life calling not so much of percentage we can see i uh, see the 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 response which we got was they figured it out by themselves or uh, you know maybe god would have intervened in their life in a very special way in the later stage and they found their life calling so there is a there's a gap between what a parent can do and the child is learning but of course there's an influence a parent had which really helped the child to grow in the lord right and also another question is um, you know this whole thing of open home policy you know like um, uh, i think you grew up like that so uh, you know how healthy is it for like considering all this you know in your research do you think an open home kind of an environment where people from church people in need can just walk in any time do you think um, that's a healthy environment for a child considering that most of them don't want to pursue you know a ministry as an option uh, how healthy is it and what is the what is the solution yeah yeah uh, so I, i i don't think it is a very healthy practice and we should not um uh, uh, this is my personal perspective you know being uh, as a pastor child but i have personally observed in my life and also from the friends which i have uh, had and this is the observation that i would make uh opening a home for people to come any time is not a healthy practice considering the privacy of the children one of the questions that we had in the questionnaire was um, have you thought that your privacy was overlooked were considered and the answer was no i mean they were uh, they did not have their privacy and especially when it comes to indian culture uh, because everyone expects pastor to open up their homes um, and to make that choice is also difficult but the suggestion or the solution which we can do is we can uh, if somebody says that i want to come i want to talk at your home we can direct them to a different place maybe church maybe church office or maybe in a cafe uh to meet the pastor to meet with the individual in a different setting than bringing them to home unless it is a very um uh, very friendly or very family friendly kind of an atmosphere but to mm. have opening a home for everyone and and everyone is not a healthy practice right so i think you can answer jeffina's question uh, she's put it on the chat um um home step made by a child could make it uh, uh, yeah solution mm, that's a good question and uh, <laughs> and and i think this would be definitely a part of that child's journey uh, because the, the expectation from congregation we cannot uh, we we cannot dictate the congregation but what we can do is we can set an expectation right from the uh, pastor's perspective like just because my child is a pastor's child or a minister's child you cannot expect him or her to serve every day or that kind of a perspective we can set as as ministers up front and the moment uh, we set their expectation right they will not be children will not be under the burden uh, that okay it is okay if i can make mistake because i am also a human being and any such kind of mistake happen um you know this this happened in my personal life as well when um something happened in my life my dad stepped up and said he is also a child he is also a son he also makes mistakes and this is this is uh, you know this is where a child get affirmation when a pastor stands for the child um so these things pastors can do or ministers can do to protect their child considering that the child is of uh, much more important uh, when it comes to his personal life this is the primary ministry that god has given than the church so we have to protect our children we have to protect our family right thank you john thank you so much thank and um, yeah i just want to um, inform everyone like if you want to you know put your presentation your ppt you can put it in the stream 
you can share it in the stream so the others can also other students can also you know go through them and learn from that so uh, please feel um, uh, you're free to do that you're welcome to do that right okay so um, so with that we come to the end of uh, our course and uh, it feels like one as if one curtain has come down <laughs> you know it's like a farewell kind of thing but uh, i know a few people did not present like anita who had actually given the topic and also i think leah lama um, so i mean they can reach out to me personally so we won't have any more sessions of irp so i just want to thank you all and to wish you all the very best god bless you guys and uh, you know con uh, consider pursuing the research you know whatever you've done consider building on it consider working on it and maybe you know you can release it even as a as a book or you know as part of a chapter in the book that you might be writing right so i just want to encourage you to do that so god bless you all the very best thank you so much bye bye thank you pastor thank you so much